Well, hello and welcome to part two of this little series we're doing with Julian Bear, and I've got the amazing Sam Gregory with me as well. Mm-hmm. Now, this is the second part of Julian going through editing some of his images and then doing some prints and having a look at kind of different papers and things, but really looking at what kind of what Julian does to his pictures to make them look as great as they do. In the first video, we went through one of your your pictures and did a little bit of work to the sky and things like that and kind of just showed really kind of you don't really do too much. I don't, no. <laughs> no this is not going to make for a boring no, video because fine, no. Um, no, I've, I very much rely on the light mm. uh, and doing as much as I can in camera so that I've got the least amount of work to do mm. when I get back. I remember perhaps dust spot removal is probably the, the biggest part sometimes of, of, of picture editing. So and I like my pictures to look natural. Mm. So I, I don't want to crank things up too far and you know paint stuff in and replace skies and stuff like that. So, But you've picked yeah. a kind of a different type of picture and a different, technically a different type of picture as yeah. well. So um, I, I shoot Nikon cameras. So in, in that first part of the video, that was a, an image a, a shot with a Nikon Z7 and a 14 to 30. Uh, this is also a shot with a Nikon camera. This is a Nikon ZFC, which is one of their crop sensor cameras. Mm-hmm. Uh, and I've also shot it with a Viltrox prime lens as well. So really, it, that happened to be the kit I had with me at the time. Um, but it's really to kind of d- to demonstrate, also to demonstrate the point that you don't always need to have high megapixel cameras with amazing mm. glass in order to make nice images that you can make prints from. Because I think people sometimes think, I, I haven't got a good enough camera to, to make prints. Well, it's really to do with the source source material. Absolutely. And, and, and most of these modern cameras, it's hard to buy a bad camera for landscape photography yeah, these days. Yeah, so, yeah. Uh, so yeah, so I've selected this image, uh, shot with a Nikon ZFC, and I think it was a Viltrox 13mm f1.4. Uh, so, uh, you know, a, re- a reasonably inexpensive setup. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I, I think I sh- I've still got... Uh, a nice picture to work from, and you know, hopefully it will make f- for some really nice prints. Yeah, well, yeah. It'll be interesting to see it on it. We're going to print it on a few different types yeah. of photo speed paper as well. Just a couple of things that Julian normally uses, and a couple of things me and Tim are going to throw in there just to see <laughs> if we can get a difference and show you guys some close-ups as well. But let's get into the actual image yeah. then, Julian. And um, you mentioned it's the, the the setup that thirteen on the crop sensor is equivalent to like a. Yeah, 21, 22, 22 on a full frame, there, isn't yeah, it? Yeah. yeah. Okay. So that you do generally favour those wider views. I'm, I'm a wide angle for, for photography, yeah. yeah. Very, yeah. very much mm. so. It's all about getting the, those expansive views in, which is what Dartmoor uh, is known for. Um, so I, I do shoot a lot of wide angle uh, photo- photography. Um, and, and for this one, this is a place called Bowerman's Nose. It's not far from, from Haytorn. It's got a very, very distinctive tour, as you can see. It's just this lump of, of rock. It's quite hard to actually understand the scale of that that, mm. that tour without mm. me standing on it but then it's a whole different type of image there. <laughs> yeah. and I'm probably not one we got so it, it, it is a it is a big chunk of rock and it's taken at a particular time of year as well as you can tell it's all green so uh, it's just sort of spring summer when it's time um, but that that time of year it's the only time of year really I think it works well as a sunrise shoot mm. because just behind me where I'm standing there there's, there's some hills and they're higher than where I'm standing so any other time of year you don't get sunrise Right. Um, so the sun has to be quite far round to the right, so you get it from that side. The, the other classic shot is actually on the on the left hand side where you get the sunset, and you can shoot that, you know, yeah. a, a, a wider range of year. But to get up and take this shot, it's a horrible alarm call. Summer early, summer <laughs> oh, early calls. Yeah. It, it's 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 not a pleasant one. No. Um, so you really have to look at the weather forecast. Now, is this actually going to be worth getting up for? Um, but in this morning, it was. I mean, it's um. We've got, a nice warm light from the rising sun. You can see already in the in the roll file there. You can see where the light's coming across. Uh, something like Bowerman's nose, and, and this goes for a lot of Dartmoor tours. If the light is flat, that's just a hunk of granite. Yeah, an interesting yeah. looking one, but but it's it, the light that models that and sets so, it from the background, and it really exactly. it's got to be that time for this view. Hasn't exactly. It? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and we've got we've got some stuff in the sky. Mm. We've got some uh, light wispy cloud there, some quite high level cloud. But I'm pretty confident when we Going to adjust the sky, we'll bring out a bit more um, of that of that detail, uh, and maybe bring up a bit of the warmth of the image as well. It's looking a little bit cold uh, at the moment. I think I said in, in part one, I tend to shoot let the camera shoot natural uh, light auto uh, auto white balance. Mm, yeah. This does a pretty good job of it, but like any automatic system on your camera, it can be 
can be full. So it's maybe looking a little bit cold at the moment. Or maybe had a bit of bit of warmth. And you can see from the histogram there, uh, I've not managed to clip anything, which is also good. Uh, I wouldn't have used any filters here. This is a scene that you, very difficult to use filtration. Yeah. Polarizer maybe I, I, I haven't used one because um, that doesn't understand the, the horizon. But using a graduated filter here would have been almost impossible. Uh, yeah. And then when we could look at bringing out the sky, we use some of the the tools that are available to us in, in, in Lightroom that help us work around that tool sticking up in the in yeah. the middle of the sky. Yeah. So is the is the global uh, color temperature where you would normally start? The That's edit? normally where where I'd start. Okay. Um, and then I'd have a look at that. So I'd, I tend to do my global adjustments for, for the main bulk of the image. So when we're looking at the foreground and the tour, uh, and then I always keep an eye on the sky. Because if I warm up the image, I'm going to also warm up the sky as well. So when I come to edit the sky, I may, depending on how it looks, how much warmth, I may just bring that coolness back in again. Because it is a blue sky. Yeah. So we need to make sure it's kept blue. And yeah. I want, like I said, I want, I want the images to remain natural looking as well. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, without things looking too garish. Yeah, cool. Let's yeah. get into it. Okay. Yeah. So, as for, for, for so we've got this dip in the in the histogram here. So we need we definitely need to bring this out a bit. So we've not just got dark areas and we've not just got light areas. So uh, I'll be focusing on the on the foreground initially. Uh, that's as soon as I've actually added just a touch of warmth. Uh, I, I normally do this one or two ways. I either do it by eye. Uh, sometimes I like to, just to see what auto comes up with, just to see how different things can look. Mm. So if I switch on auto, you can see actually it's added probably what we're on 6,100 and it's taken up to 750. I don't deal in absolute numbers, but it's just to see how much mm. it, it's shifted yeah. by. But even adding that that bit of warmth in, it, the image just feels, um, it feels a, a, a little bit brighter, more uh, reflective of, of the light. Yeah, as I saw it when I was there, because that that light is still quite low. It's above the horizon, but it's still quite orangey and, and, and warm. Um, so I'll leave it auto. No, I might come back to that, and then I normally find a, a halfway point. Yeah, um, I, I rarely just leave it in auto. I just like to see what things look like. Yeah. Uh, so we'll bring back some of the shadows, and you can see the image is already come to life now because mm. without the shadows all you can really see is is Bowman's nose there yeah but so when, when I bring the shadows up just a little bit I can start seeing some of these foreground rocks here I can see that one's is catching the light and you can start to see all the things that are starting to catch the light now along the, the foliage along here so that's already Im improved things quite considerably I don't think I don't want to go too far if you go too far then you Instinctively, that that doesn't look right. It doesn't yeah. really look like a sunrise shot. You just look, you've cranked it up. So it's fine to have still have darker areas. Yeah, in your image. But just that that increase that you yeah. have now, it removes some of that denser mid to upper area part yeah. on the right hand side of the frame, especially. You know, you want that that depth of of exactly of, of the landscape there, don't you? But it's so just it's come a nice to balance. Light. Yeah, yeah exactly. I always, and I always, even after I've done maybe just about say two seconds have changed. If I go back to what it was, you can see it's, you know, it's already think, made a, a, a dramatic improvement. Yeah, mm. sorry, I didn't mean to jump yeah, in there, sorry. Julian, but what's really interesting is, especially with, I find with colour temperature, when you do go back, suddenly that first one looks so blue, doesn't mm. it? Yeah, you yeah know? it's very common yeah. for that. Yeah, so do do check back, like yeah. Julian's suggesting there, because that's really, really good for improving your colour awareness or yeah. temperature mm. awareness, yeah. maybe. And like I say, it's not. It's important not to brighten the image too much mm. um, because it is an early morning shot, and you still want to maintain that feeling. So, uh, I mean, I could go into exposure, but even even with half a stop, quarter stop, it's, it's for me, it's losing losing some of that atmosphere and, and mood. Yeah, definitely, um, definitely. It, it's a dramaticness, isn't it? I suppose yeah. it's kind of yeah. that. It just loses that lovely yeah. light, and, and and that's why I tend to go for the shadows first. Because adjusting the shadows before you adjust the exposure can really change the way you, you look at the image. It can really change its, its overall brightness yeah. um, without having to go straight to, to the exposure first. And as you mentioned, actually, the exposure, you know, according to the histogram, the yeah. exposure is pretty much bang on any, anyway, isn't it? Yeah. So it's those other bits within it that are going to give you the Yeah, the and details. you can see how it's already shifted as well. I'm starting to get the shadow areas off to the left. That's starting to expand out a little yeah. bit. 
Okay. When you're shooting out in the field, yeah. are you aware of the histogram of things? Oh yeah, yeah. So it's, it's, a, it's a good point. So I always check the the histogram. It's, it's and and this is what I, I love shooting on the on the Nikon or any of the mirrorless cameras. Actually, is, is the EVF for me as a, as a landscape photographer? The EVF is mm. it's amazing because you can not only do you get to see what the camera is probably going to make the picture look like, but you also can see the, the EVF inside the viewfinder. And I'm and I've got sun off here to my my right hand side. So having my, rather than looking at the back of the LCD screen, looking at the EVF and then be able to see the histogram inside there yeah. and what the camera thinks the picture is going to look like is extremely valuable. Yeah. And for a scene like this, it's the, 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 the dynamic range isn't too great. I'm, I'm not worried about it too much, but there's a, a great tip that a photographer friend shared, my, uh, shared with me. that if Things are looking a bit tight in terms of the contrast because you're looking at a JPEG, essentially a JPEG preview. I sometimes switch the camera's picture style into flat. Yes. Well, it's called flat in the Nikon camera. Yeah, or, and that, neutral or neutral in, in, yeah, on, yeah. on the other ones. So if you're ever worried about, oh, maybe it's not quite right, if you switch it to, to flat or neutral and then take the picture and play it back, you'll notice that the, the clipping's gone way yeah. down and that gives you a much, much better indication of whether you're in the in the dynamic range. Mm. But even even with a shot, it, it's it's not too much of a not too much of a problem. But yeah, I do use the EVF, I do use the histogram. And I use the picture profiles as well, like I say, to yeah. either to give me an indication of what the picture might look like, or just to give me a better indication of what that dynamic range what is going to do with it. it yeah. what, what, what's going to be possible? Um, obviously, when you import it, when it's a flat profile, yeah. it looks <laughs> it looks pretty flat, so you have got a better work to do. So I'm I'm happy so far with with the the foreground, um, but like I said in, in the last image, I'm going to now adjust the sky, and then I'll reevaluate. The entire image again because once you start rebalancing stuff stuff might come uh, to the forefront so i'll go into the uh mask section now this is where you know the advances in in lightroom and photoshop technologies are really good because this the ai stuff for me is i hate to use the term a bit of a game changer <laughs> but you know nine times out of ten it really does get this this yeah. stuff right and the and while you know People, you, you can you can bracket out in the field. That's more processing when you get when you get back home. Yeah. And and, and for this scene, you know, there's no need for me to to to, to take three exposures. Um, it's just about bringing back some of the the detail. It's all the, all the information's there in the raw file already. And using traditional digital masks here would have been problematic because I've got the top of Bowman's nose right there. So there's no hard line for me to. To, to, to graduate against. Yeah. And or in the field, as you and said. And or earlier. in the field. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and then you can use luminance mask, but it's just all it's getting into that little little bit on the right hand side there. Yeah. Well. <laughs> the <bottom. laughs> yeah. And you know, I'm a firm believer that if the tools work, I'll use them. I'll use them. Yeah. And this is a great a great time saver for me. You always got to check when it's done. Um so I can have a look at the red area here and it's it's done a good job. It's done it? a great job. Yeah. It's it's a, it's, a, it's, a, it's spooky what it can do. So mm. uh I'd use the tools if you can. So the first one that, uh, for skies I tend to go for is I tend to bring back the highlights a little bit. Not too much. Have you ever found the tools that in Lightroom when you do masking yeah. a bit limiting? This little block that they do? Not really, no. Because I, I, like I said, I'm a, I'm a light touch mm. editor. Yeah. So it's really for me exposure, highlights... Uh, sometimes blacks, if there's, uh, like I was shown in the previous image, if there's a bit of darkness mm. in, in some of those clouds, it's quite useful to bring back a, uh, a, bit, a bit of darkness uh, or, or texture as well. But yeah, it's really exposure, highlights, um, dehaze as well to bring back some contrast and a bit of texture. Mm. I don't think I'll use the texture too much in this one because there's, there's probably not enough. Uh, yeah, no, here. I only ask because in, in Capture One, the other alternative, mm. you, you can apply everything. Um, as layers and things, but I'm just um, I kind of yeah. something I'm asking everyone. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm going to use a bit of dehaze just to bring mm. back a bit of contrast. Now dehaze is an extremely powerful tool, mm. and one you can easily go very wrong in. Even that at 44, mm. I mean, there's no way that looks anywhere near natural. But it's just to bring back some of that that blue, and and like anything with Lightroom tools, there's actually more than one way to. To skin the cat, yeah. So yeah. I might use dehaze in one image, or I might use contrast, or I might use exposure. It's, it's as long as you get the result that you're looking for. That, that's I think that's it, isn't it? It's There's no right or wrong. Yeah. What is the result I'm looking for, and why? Yeah. You, you know, I, I want to bring that down because X, Y, Z. Yeah. 
so I think even there that's a little bit too much and just bring a little bit of the exposure down just trying to do things bit by bit even go a little bit too far and you see it goes all muddy and it's not so I don't even need very much now this is an instance and we talked about the sky in the last mm. last image this uh, whether I'd add more saturation or adjust to saturation the sky is actually looking a bit warm and it's looking warm because I did a global adjustment on the, on the mm. warmth of the, the area so I'm possibly going to get the tint and I'm just going to push that back a little bit towards the blue again very fine adjustments and you can see it's just starting to mm. make the sky look more the way it, it would do I suppose it's not so much the blue it's more the, the wisps of cloud yeah. isn't it yeah. you want them to look a little bit more neutral and there might be a case for some saturation here, but you've got to be really careful between saturation uh, and vibrance. And saturation saturates all all the colours. So I know I'm only adjusting the sky here, but it's again another one of these tools that I take a, quite a bit of care and attention of that I don't want to go too far. Let's see if I go too far. It really that looks so just about there. So. I always like to, once I've made some adjustments, go back, have a look, see what things look like. So if I can, I can turn these masks on and off. There we go. Off, on. I can say it faster than my computer. So I think <laughs> I've definitely got some dust spots there that I'm probably going to, I'm not going to bore people with, with dust spot removals. <laughs> we'll do that before the print. We'll do that yeah, before we'll do the that print. Before. But yeah, I mean, you know, I, you do see that when the, when the skies come out of a, of a Go to my, my dust spots. You'll probably see. I probably should be probably quite embarrassed to have so many dust spots in my image. Oh, it's actually probably not as bad as I thought mm, it was. It's not too bad. There's a couple there that I need to to bust, but yeah, well, let's not let's not do that just now. So, I think I'm reasonably happy with that. It's maybe now that I've rebalanced things, it's maybe a case that I might add a little bit of exposure. Uh, let's have see what it looks like. Just a. I mean, that's not that's not even quarter of a stop. Mm. And I'll just go back. Yeah, I don't think it needs any anything more than that. No, if we go down further down, a bit to the texture. So we can see there's quite. And so what I like using the texture slider for on these on these granite rocks here. It just brings out a little bit, and this will probably be quite hard to, to appreciate on screen through YouTube. It just helps. If I, if, I, if I go too far, actually, that might you might be able to see it a bit better. But whereas sharpening or sharpening around the, the edges, mm. this should um, add sort of texture to, to, to all the areas. But you notice also, like a lot of these sliders, you know, it also can just about see it adds a bit of extra saturation so again you've got to be careful with these tools and I'll do it and we'll have a and I'm going to I'm going to sharpen based on what I want the, the main object of the, mm -hmm. of the image to be which is really the tool yeah so that's that would have been the area that I would have focused on so that's where I'm going to focus my sharpening on but you know as, as always light romantics default sharpening anyway um, I can put that mask on. And it goes back. There we go. There we go. Don't want to go too far. I think that looks... Really Always with sharpening, you just, less is more, isn't it? Less, less is Definitely. more. Things get crunchy. Yeah. yeah. Um, do you ever use the masking slider? I do sometimes um, if I've got a particular area of the image that I want to, to focus in on. But these these the kind of bigger vista views um, tend not to go go to that kind of level of, of detail. Mm. Um, and I think I know my editing process is <laughs> it's quite it's quite it's good, sorry it's quite um, it's quite simple. Um, well, no, I always think that, yeah, simple's the best, really, I think. We don't have can... to spend a, a lot of time on it. So if we go back to where I was, that's where I was. Mm. And this is where I 
I've got to. No. And it shows really how much elasticity there is, in, even in those files on the ZFC, yes. um, you bringing it back to that natural look. Um, but it was all in there. It's all in there, yeah. You, know, you don't need those 60 megapixel full frame. Not, no, not necessarily. You, no, mean, what, you want them. And that, that's quite a nice light setup. Yeah. Julian's often walking fair distances yeah. sometimes yeah. to places. So, And if he's doing stuff for his own YouTube channel, you've got to carry the camera you're recording with, the camera you're shooting yeah. with, the tripods, you know, et cetera. Yeah. So back breaking stuff. It's back breaking <laughs> stuff. Why do we do it? Yeah. No, but I, I think that's a really nice natural representation of that beautiful yeah. morning light, mm. really lovely composition. You know, the, the hills in the background, the little wisps in the sky that just mirror that shape of that hill down on the right hand side as well. So it's really nice. Yeah. And and I, I like that natural approach personally. I think it works really well here. Yeah. I mean, there's a, there's a temptation yeah. to, you know, darken areas and, and use radio filters and, mm. and, and really add dark to light. But I think that natural look where you've just got the light and it's just catching the right areas, I think I think is it's enough for my types, types yeah. of photograph I take. Yeah. And it's very representative representative of what I saw yeah. that morning uh, and, and that's what I'm looking for. Cool. Well, yeah. we're going to get that printed up, aren't we, too? Yeah, we'll put it on a few different papers and we'll be back to show you the results and we'll get our thoughts on the prints and, uh, yeah, we'll go from there. All right. See you in a bit. See you in a bit. Right then, so we've printed off these pictures on different papers and we've kind of gone with the similar papers to be honest that we did in the last video as well so if you haven't watched that I will watch that after this one um, we've got the NST bright white platinum etching brighter and legacy gloss again and yeah I mean we're, we're seeing, seeing things quite similarly I, I hope um, in the fact that we've got the brighter in the top left here which almost it's kind of brought everything down a little bit, hasn't it? A bit, a bit heavier. It does, yes, definitely. It seems a little bit darker. I think if you compare it to, is this the... Platinum that mention, is the platinum, platinum mention, mention, yeah. 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 I mean, particularly, you can notice it in the sky there. Mm. There's a bit of a, a deeper hue there of, of the blue, whereas that's definitely looking a, a bit lighter. A bit lighter. I think uh, another thing, actually, Julian, we were talking yeah. about off-camera whilst these were coming out of the printer, was whether the warmth, because Julian had added in a little bit of global warmth in the colour temperature, we were throwing around whether that was enough, too much, not enough, just querying each other. Yeah. And I think depending on then the paper, because I think with the, the gloss uh, legacy, isn't it? It's yeah. the legacy gloss yeah, here, legacy which gloss, is, as, yeah. is naturally warmer. I think that maybe then is touching on potentially being a bit too warm overall, maybe. I, I think yeah. agree, because I look at this one here and it's a bit more how I envisage the image. Yeah. Because it's still warm. You've still got that nice warm glow on the side of the, the tour there and across. The landscape but that feels a little bit too orangey a little bit too too warm for me so i'm, I'm more naturally drawn um to that the way the paper Ooh. yeah just the image in this instance so tim that's i suppose based on just the actual generic warmth within the yeah. paper yeah and, and people that that info is on is that info easily gettable for people on the website somewhere yes we've got um well it's in the the ebook, the art of printing, Fantastic. at the back in the glossary, but it's also on the website in the technical data sheets you can download um, in the product attachments, I believe, yeah. in, on the paper page. Um, yeah, we've done quite. You can have a look through and look at the white points of each paper on there. But again, it's not. It's not as I said in, in the previous one. It's not about right or no, right or right or wrong. I mean, if I presented this image to you and you weren't comparing it to the other ones, yeah. you probably wouldn't think there's anything wrong with it. Yeah, yeah, no, no, there is anything. No, wrong no, with it, no, I know. But you, mean, yeah. you wouldn't, you wouldn't be comparing yeah. the, uh, the 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 warmth of the. Yeah. Know, only when you sit down and you compare all four that you start to see the and differences. Stare at them and look at them for. Yeah. Well, I mean, a and, while. and talk, talking of staring at your images, yeah. I mean, this is, <laughs> this is one thing I, I love about printing is you do tend to spend more time looking at your images. I mean, mm. I'm already looking looking at these images, I've started to spot stuff. You now, clearly, I've not. <laughs> done the dust spots for this, so I, I can see them. But I mean, dust spots is one thing, but you will find that the more time you spend, I mean, you know this, you, when you spend more time looking at your images, you start to notice more, and not, and not just mistakes, but you know, potentially how you might have shot composition slightly differently, yeah. or there was a wayward car on a, on a road somewhere that you didn't quite spot, because you get quite focused mm -hmm. during the edit. Yeah. You're focusing on the sliders, you're focusing on just in this area, but then when you print it off and you start to have a sit back and you start to look at the image, you really get to get to know your photograph a lot better. 
So are there occasions actually with that in mind where you print slightly smaller, a couple of versions on one page? Because I certainly do that. You know, I might do a couple of variants on the same yeah. A3, you know, two or three A5s within it. And that can be useful kind of to see if you've got two or three difference on the edits or like you say, actually just to check other stuff within the yeah, frame. Yeah, or even sometimes if I've got, maybe I've taken two or three shots and, you know, over the space Similar, of a couple of minutes. Yeah, right, yeah. And, and maybe the lighting something different. And you look at them on the screen and you can't quite figure out which one you might want to to yeah, go with. Yeah. Printing them often and whether you do it on one sheet or whether you lay it out like this is a really good way of helping you understand which, which of those images you might want to, to yeah. go ahead with. Mm. Yeah, definitely. No, it's, a, it's a lot of, I mean, a lot of value in printing. Mm. Uh, and like we've said before on, on, on the channel, do you know the test packs that Photo Speed sell are really, really useful for getting a feel for how the different papers perform. Yeah. So I would really encourage you to try those out. Um, and then you know, experiment, basically. You can see and different things yeah. might suit. It depends what you want. It depends you do on little you prints. I think yeah. you've got a sheet of A4 in the test packs, chop it in half and try different things and perhaps different couple of different images, but perhaps just try well, four yeah. papers like we've done here, couple, four A5s, just to have a look and see and a general feel of what kind of work you do. And as uh, my, my final thought on this is, we were talking a little bit about this as well, Julian generally is using fairly wide angle lenses, which I think really look excellent when they're printed and you can see them bigger because there's so much detail and often we're just seeing them in such a small thing on the back of the screen and we're covering, you know, a few miles in this frame, really, yeah. of actual topography. And so I think those sorts of images really, really benefit from being printed nice and big so that you can really step into the landscape because that angle brings you in, doesn't yeah. it? That's that sweep in. And I think uh, it's what Julian's done so nicely here and, and with, with the positioning of everything within the frame and how the light falls on it, it very much feels like a I, I'm there, basically. And mm. I think with landscape, that's a great thing well, that's to That's what feel. you want. That's what, yeah. what my pitch is to be. I want people to share the experience of, of potentially what I, what I saw. Yeah, fab. Well, I think that's we're, we're there, aren't we? On that I team? think we are. Yeah. No, they're absolutely fantastic. I think it just shows we've all got our own favourites here, I think, and I'm kind of opinions on which, which yeah. one we would like. Remember, the, the, this was the, uh, these are A3 Plus, aren't they? These are A3 Plus, yeah. And yeah. this was shot on my crop sensor camera yep. with a reasonably inexpensive lens as well. And yeah. the images have come out beautiful. You don't need oh, 100 megapixel. Well, we no. don't like them 100 megapixel medium format camera, but you know, it's not necessary for creating good, bold prints like this at, yeah. at a very good size. I think these would go up to A2 easily. Easily, yeah. 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 They're, they're really sharp. They're really good. Yeah. <laughs> so... So yeah, really happy. Good. Cool. Well, uh, if you have enjoyed these videos, do give the video a like and leave us a comment, a positive one if you can. Uh, <laughs> no, if there's any questions about the papers or stuff with Julian as well, he's got a YouTube channel, so go and check out his YouTube channel and on all the usual social media places where we find everybody. Uh, but we would say thank you very much for watching. Uh, stay subscribed yeah. to the First Speed channel as ever for more videos. We shall be back here in the studio with Julian, with me, with others, with Tim. Yeah. Who knows? <laughs> and uh, we'll see you all again very soon. Cheerio Thanks for now. Much. See you. Bye-bye.